Good morning, gang. How y'all doing? Welcome to Hope at 7. It's Wednesday once again. You find uh, February go, f did February go fast for you? I found that February went fast for, uh, for me. We're in the last week of February. I'm okay with that. Um, Sunday morning I went to uh, the hub to film church and uh, there was quite a bit of snow on the on the ground and uh, Monday morning I went to the hub and there was no snow on the ground and the southern wind blew in the singing birds I pulled up to the high school and uh, parked my car for hot lunch on Monday and I heard birds singing and I said it's nice to hear you I think they hitched a ride on that southern wind today is gonna be sunny Looking forward to seeing a little bit of that wherever you are. The Lord bless you this morning. Welcome to Hope at 7. Um, we've been studying Psalm 89. And one of the things about Psalm 89 that really hit me uh, in its, um, it's a long one is, uh, that's why we're on day three of it, is that uh, God promises that he will... Um, make Jesus the king from David's line that will last forever. So David um, rose up. I want to give you a, um, a little synopsis. You probably all know this stuff, but Jesus, uh, David becomes king, starts off strong, uh, gets comfortable in his own kingship, and when things are good, he starts to uh, take advantage of his, of his power, so to speak, and he, he um, ends up taking another man's wife and having that man murdered to cover up the fact that he got her pregnant. And uh, David um, retained his kingship but wrecked his his family. Um, then um, loses one of his sons when his son Absalom grew up. He attempted a coup against his father. And uh, David's son Absalom died. And then uh, David's son Solomon became the king and you've heard of Solomon's amazing wisdom and uh, Solomon uh, had the greatest kingdom that earth has ever seen and Solomon was the richest man that's ever lived and uh, and he had a great kingdom in fact his kingdom was so amazing it was for a while a good example of uh, what the kingdom of heaven would look like on earth Solomon's kingdom was amazing then Solomon, the Bible um, says that Solomon became obsessed with women. He became a sex addict. He had hundreds of wives, hundreds of concubines. And to please his wives that came from other nations, he um, went after their gods. He became an idol worshiper. And Solomon, who had been a good king, the wisest king who ever lived, lost his... Um, his godly influence, and then the kings after him, some were good, some most were bad. And what this whole uh, history of Israel has shown us is that men can't be king. There's been a few, like Josiah, that were good, and uh, but even those good kings proved to be frail and human, and they messed up because humans aren't good at being king. And back when God, when Israel wanted a king, and God chose Saul to be their first king. He, he says, you know, if you get this human king, it's not going to be the greener grass that you think it is. And that's because God knew that human kings just can't be good. Good morning from Bermuda, my friend. Um, Kimberly, thanks for watching. So here we go. I've called this uh, Psalm, uh, Psalm 89C, part three of Psalm 89, fighting God. So for instance, picture yourself getting on a tricycle and uh, going down the middle of a highway, facing off against a semi, okay? Um, when we fight God, it's like you getting on a trike and facing a semi truck in the middle of the highway. You, who's gonna win, right? To those who are humble and follow the one true king, it goes well for them. But for those that fight God, they end up hitting the wall of reality is that he is the unstoppable and immovable object. His dynasty is going to go on forever. Our little kingdoms, the, the things that we set ourselves up to be in charge of, the way that we exalt ourselves when we think we're right all the time. One, one thing 
I realized a few weeks ago has is this question have I stopped to ask myself could I be wrong uh, when we think we're right and everybody else should bend to our way of seeing things um, we we start to think that we're king and it's nefarious it's insidious it's it's a pride that's underneath the surface so we don't even realize we're having a problem with it and um, only God is always right that means every day you and I have to check our spiritual pulse and say could I be wrong it's a posture of humility we have to have um, because the first part um, of Psalm 89 the first two parts that we went over um, the author Ethan of this psalm is saying that things are good. This is amazing. God has established a king. His line's going to go on forever. Um, God's going to protect him. Yada yada yada. And then all of a sudden, verse thirty-eight, it turns on a dime because it says this. But now God has rejected the king and cast him off. You are angry, Lord, with your anointed king. You've renounced your covenant with him. It seems you've thrown him and his crown to the dust. You've broken down the walls protecting him and ruined every fort defending him. Everyone who comes along has robbed him. He's become a joke to his neighbors. This once mighty king now has his enemies strengthened. And Lord, the enemies are stronger than your king and they are rejoicing. You've made your king's sword useless. He can't make any headway. You've refused to help him in battle. You've ended his splendor. And overturned his throne, you've made him old before his time and publicly disgraced him. So the whole thing turns on a dime. The king that once started out strong, now everything's fallen apart, just like David and Solomon. And uh, the first 37 verses, um, a pastor wrote this this morning, I read it. Pastor David Guzik wrote this. The first 37 verses of this psalm soared with confidence in God's incomparable greatness and in his covenant to David. Here the tone suddenly shifts as Ethan the, the psalmist considered some present crisis which seemed to be all the worse when contrasted with his understanding of God's greatness and God's faithfulness to David. Because we don't know the exact time that the psalm was written, it could have been a number of crises that prompted this, this turn of events. Um, Absalom could have rebelled against his father David and died. This young man died in his pride. It might have been the spiritual decline of Solomon, a guy that started out strong, and then then he 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 lost his spiritual edge, and um, it might have been the rapid and rap, radical decline of the kingdom after Solomon's death. Israel descended, and other kings even took over at one point, and it's some crisis that is um, is happening, and uh, verse forty six, the psalmist says, "Oh Lord, how long will this go on?" God, things are terrible right now. How long will this go on? Will you hide yourself forever? How long will your anger burn like fire? And he says, God, remember how short my life is. And now I'm so empty and I have a futile existence. He's, he's really starting to feel down about life. No one can live forever, Lord. I'm, I'm going to die. And, and soon, where's your unfailing love you promised? In the first three quarters of the psalm, where's that love, Lord? You promised to David with a faithful pledge. So, Lord, I carry the insults of people all around me. So things are dark, okay? This is the real, real life psalm. Your enemies mock me, O Lord. They've mocked your king. So here we got Ethan the prophet wondering why things have gone so bad. They were great. Why did this all happen, he says. Yes, God. Why is God temporarily pulled back? And I say temporarily because, okay, God said David's throne would last forever. And we know that because Jesus came as a descendant of David, that David's throne is going to last forever because Jesus is king now. And the increase of his kingdom shall know no end, the Bible says. Jesus as king is taking over the planet. One day he's going to rule down here. God with us on earth is going to be the perfect kingdom we've always longed for, the, the happily ever after, ever after we all long for. Jesus is God, but that means he's the only one that was ever meant to really be king. The only one that could be king of God's people. The true reason that all this awful stuff happened with David and Absalom and Solomon is because every human king is going to let us down. 
And when you and I start to think we're king of certain areas in our life that God has put us in charge of to take care of, we have to remember the earth is the Lord's and everything in it. He may have given you something to steward, to take care of. He may have made you in charge of an area of your life, but you and I aren't the king. And when we start to think we're the king, that's when our pride catches us and trips us. We fall on our face. We get a sore nose. We run into the wall of reality that we're not king. David got comfortable and thought he deserved the pleasure of Bathsheba. Absalom got proud and thought he deserved to be king and tried to take it by force. Solomon started out strong and had the greatest kingdom in history. Then he got his eyes off of God and he got his eyes onto himself. And he became a sex addict and made the choice to follow after foreign gods. Bottom line is all three of these guys, David, Absalom, Solomon, all the bad kings in, in, that followed, got lost in their sin. They took their eyes off the fact that they weren't really the king, that God was the king. And that's when they got messed up. And I, I come to realize that even when I'm trying to solve all my problems and trying to sort it out and make it work my way, that I'm trying to be king. And when we fall for that lie, that we are in charge, when we fall for the lie that we're in charge, because that's the lie we're not, we get messed up in our overconfidence. Overconfidence is our greatest weakness. Um, let him who thinks he stands on his own take heed lest he fall, the Bible says. Pride comes before you fall. And so every morning we got to do a heart check. Where is my pride level? Where, where am I thinking that I'm right all the time? Do I have to reconsider that I might have to um, say sorry and humble myself and get right with God and my fellow man? All these things, Men took their eyes off the one true king. They got their tricycle ready and they went up against the semi. The consequences of our sin and actions like that last for a while. The good news is, is once we've been humbled, we've learned our lesson. Um, God is merciful and the consequences of our sin won't last forever. God is still king and that means he sent Jesus to be the one true king who died on the cross for my pride, for my sin, for my manipulation of people, for my control, for my sarcasm, for my um, pride where Bob Evans thought he was something else. And he died for that and he's forgiven me and he's, he'll forgive you. And um, the Psalm ends the way that it began, um, full circle back to the fact that Jesus is Lord. And this last verse of the Psalm says, so praise the Lord. Praise Bob, don't praise yourself, don't praise, don't praise anybody but Jesus. It's all about him. He's the one that really matters. And when we get that right, when we get that right, we work properly, we begin to work properly, we operate properly, we, we can be effective in serving God because he's the king. Peter even says, uh, let him who serves the Lord serve with the strength God provides so that in all things he might get the glory. God is good. So verse 52 says, So praise the Lord forever, not us. Amen and amen. So let's get that right. Let's get our hearts right this morning and realize Jesus is king. And uh, this is a great song about how we should come let, us, come let us worship the king. And all these wonderful names of God that are being sung make me glad he's my king because he's the strong one.
May we get our hearts aligned properly with that fact today. Jesus is King. Bow with me in prayer, will you? We bow before you. O King of Kings, we know we need your help. We know that we are weak and you are strong. So Lord, it's your pleasure, you said in, in Psalm 88, to give us strength when we're weak. So we ask for that. And we, uh, we focus on you your character, your goodness, the fact that you are holy. So Lord, take us who are human and make us holy and give us your strength and wisdom for this day. Make us lights in a dark world. Help us to think and speak properly today and bring your light and build others up as we bring your kingdom. Prepare this earth for you when you come back, Jesus. Amen. God loves you. He's so good. He's so gracious. So have a good Wednesday, and I'll see you tomorrow morning. Tomorrow night, uh, we're watching uh, The Chosen on Zoom. If you want to join us, message me. I'll send you a link. May the Lord bless you and keep you. 
make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he turn his face towards you and give you peace. Love you. Have a great, great day. Bye-bye.